So hello and welcome to a special episode of The Way to Be. What we're looking at today is a newly established beehive. But what I want you to notice is the behavior of the bees that are flying around in front of it. And also, you can't help but notice there's a funny looking contraption on the entrance. But what we want to look at today are the bees and the way that they're behaving right now. This is a newly installed swarm of honeybees. That's why we had to put in a new beehive because we're out of hives. They're all full right now. This is a queen excluder on the front. And the reason for that is if you listen to the bees, they're pretty excited. They're animated. And we're also going to get some nice slow motion sequences so you can see what their flight behavior looks like. But looking at the landing board, you can see their abdomens are elevated. They're fanning pretty feverishly and this is not the behavior that we want to see in a freshly hive swarm of bees. So 24 hours ago, we put a colony of bees in here. It looked like about three or four pounds of bees, medium sized swarm. Today they look unsettled and that's why I put the queen excluder on it. There's a very good shot of the worker bee on the landing board getting her pheromone in the air, which is the queen's pheromone. And we're going to notice in a few minutes here that the bees that are flying in front of the hive generating all of this activity are facing the hive and it's very distinctive. This is different from bees that are doing orientation flights. We know that they're not doing that. They are not uh, orienting themselves and then heading out to scout. They're hovering and staying in front. So they're not necessarily going in and they're not necessarily leaving. So this is a judgment call on the part of the backyard beekeeper. If you could keep a swarm from leaving your hive, would you and should you? There are deep frames in this hive. It's a 10 frame deep. There are frames of honey capped. There is also a rapid round feeder on top that has one to one sugar syrup. And uh, they've got everything they need. They've got drawn comb, so they should, in theory, be happy to be here. But sometimes when you install a swarm of bees in a hive, they could abscond. And absconding means they just depart. You go out there in a couple of days and look at the hive, and uh, you just figure that the bees didn't want to be there. So they left. A lot of people collect swarms and they're very careful when collecting the swarm to try to locate the queen. If you locate the queen, and a lot of people do it, they put the queen in a queen cage. Now once you put the queen in the queen cage, you put her inside the hive and of course the bees that are in the swarm with her will follow that pheromone inside. But you have an option. Sometimes it's not that easy to find a queen in a swarm. So you could actually put a queen excluder on the entrance. And that's what we've done here. So there are some things to consider when you do that. And there are some things that you need to be aware of where you definitely don't want to leave a queen excluder on the front of your hive for an extended period of time. Often people ask, couldn't we just put a queen excluder over the entrance of the hive and prevent the swarm in the first place? Well, in theory you could, but the problem with that is you end up with replacement queens emerging inside the hive and the resident queen being unable to depart. You risk having a fight between the established queen and those that are emerging afterwards. So I do not personally recommend putting a queen excluder on the front of your hive and leaving it there indefinitely. There are some other things to think about too. One is if you collected a medium sized swarm, for example, these are fanning her pheromone, but you don't necessarily know if the queen that you put in the hive has been mated. If it's a swarm, this swarm happened in the second week of May. And if you were, for example, to put a queen excluder on the front of a hive and the queen was a virgin queen, she wouldn't be able to get out to complete her mating flight. So you could actually prohibit that. So I highly recommend 
that if you try to use this method for keeping your queen in until they establish themselves in the hive, I recommend that you take it off three or four days afterwards, no matter what's going on. And that's because you need to allow the queen to fly out and get mated and return. Now I can already tell you in advance that the queen that is with this swarm is already mated. And we're gonna see later on how we know that that happens. If you wanna jump ahead, you can go all the way to the 16 or 17 minute mark and not miss those results. What I'm doing for you here is really taking the time to show in detail the close-ups of the bees behavior, how unsettled they are, the noise that's around the camera. A lot of these bees are airborne. I'm gonna give you a side shot that will show you what that looks like. But another thing that I wanted to do is of course to show this close-up of the queen excluder, which is made out of metal and uh, to see how easily the bees can get through it or how much they struggle to get through it. And I can satisfy some of the questions that I receive about queen excluders on the front or even when they're used inside the hive. Can they pull dead bees through there to get rid of them? They can. Can drones pass through them? They cannot. So drones and queens cannot get through the queen excluder. So they're fanning, of course, and again, it's all about Nasanoff. And when they do this in great numbers, like they're doing here, they're trying to keep the group together. And what they're doing is they're flying back and forth in front of the hive as if they're waiting for the queen to leave. And that's exactly what they're doing. So we look at the slow motion sequence here. This lets us very clearly see what the flight patterns are. They're facing the entrance and they continue to face the entrance where if they were doing orientation flights, they would be doing a figure eight and they would be looking all around in every direction because these worker bees would be registering what the horizon line looks like. They memorize visually what different landscape features might be. And of course, in the background there with a the blue strap on it is that recently self-hiving colony of bees so it's a huge colony right next door. They chose the hive, so we don't have to do anything to make sure that they'll stick around. They certainly did, and they are sticking around. So what was the source of the swarm that we installed here? From my own bees, because they were collected from a tree that's only about 50 feet from where this hive is. And again, as I mentioned, because I was out of equipment, I had to use this Flow Hive Plus uh, two version. That's why it's got the aluminum adjustable height legs. It's made out of red cedar and everything in it is new with the exception of the frames that I put in. So the frames that I put in, as I mentioned, uh, have capped honey. We've got some pollen on some, but the biggest advantage is that we have drawn comb and it's a 10 frame and we have a wrap it around feeder. I'll just say that again. If you're gonna hive a brand new swarm of bees and it's an intermediate size swarm, certainly they can manage on their own, but we want to create an environment that they want to remain in. So when you do that, one-to-one -one sugar syrup, it's not necessary to put honeybee healthy or any essential oils in that syrup because they're likely going to use that up within the first week. This is a good sized uh, swarm. If it was a smaller one, we would have put them in a nucleus hive, five frame, but because the numbers are so great, I put them in a 10 frame, single, deep. And of course, I will step back and show you the rest of the hive configuration, but I want you to see what the bees are doing here and what their behavior is like. You can also, while it's slowed way down, watch how they struggle to get through the queen excluder. And we get a closer look. And again, I just want you to take your time and watch them pass underneath. Now that's key too, because the queen excluder bars here don't go all the way to the landing board because this landing board is tilted. It's uh, key to pay attention to the bottom bar of the queen excluder to make sure that they're still having to squeeze under that, like the one on the right there is doing right now, just as they would if they went through any of the upper openings because it wouldn't serve the purpose well if this were not flat on the landing board, or in this case, all of the flow hive landing boards are pre-tilted. 
So the opening is the same. So we know the queen can't get away, and that's very important. So again, they're all flying. Now, if the queen excluder were not there, you would see bees facing the entrance, and they would be entering the hive and departing the hive, entering the hive and departing the hive, and they're building up their numbers outside because they anticipate the queen departing with them, and then, of course, they would fly to another location. So that's a judgment call. Do you want to keep the bees against their will, potentially? Because they were on their way out, there's no question. When I started the video, the noise that you hear, the collection of bees on the outside, uh, they're making preparations to depart. They definitely would have absconded. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to just put this queen excluder on the front, demonstrate its use, and then give you the choice. I'm not saying that you need to do it, but it is very common that people ask, once I hive a swarm, how can I guarantee that they'll stay? If you've watched my videos in the past, sometimes they depart and leave and come back again. Sometimes they leave and you never see them again. And uh, so this is going to guarantee that they're going to stay. What does that take? How long should it take? And what would be the indicators that we finally want them over and that they're going to stay because the queen can't depart but how do we know they become vested in the new cavity that they're put in? Well, they would start to bring resources in. These bees are not foraging. That's the other problem. They're not headed out. They're not doing their orientation corkscrew flight and then zipping off to the east or west or wherever they might go to get resources. They're staying right here. They're hovering in front of the hive and they're non-productive. If we saw pollen coming in on their hind legs and if we saw that they were definitely coming in from across the field and they're landing and bringing new resources in that would tell us that those aren't scouts because the other thing that they might be doing is scouting out for another location but if they come back loaded with resources they're not scouting they're provisioning the new hive so we're going to watch this behavior a little more because I want it to sink in. And also it's just cool to watch bees and see what they're doing. They do feed each other on the landing board before they departed from the hive that uh, they occupied before. They would have all filled up. So we're looking at abdomens here that are fully extended. So they're full of resources. They're more than capable, by the way, of drying out honeycomb with the resources that they bring with them. That's really instinctively what they've prepared to do. So the sugar syrup is not mandatory, but if you want to give them a good boost along, uh, it's a great start. One to one is good. A little thinner, it seems, might even be better. So, but you see the posture, look how they're just on the landing board doing nothing in particular. There's nothing to rob either, even though we did put some honey in here on the ends. Uh, there's not a lot for them to do robbing wise so their behavior would be a little different and again if this is tedious for you you can go ahead and advance it so you can see the ending but I'm going to tell you ahead of time that once you start to see the pollen coming in uh, you know that they've accepted this resource and this as a place to live now did they accept it on their own nah because we kept the queen and uh, we kept them here until probably out of their survival instinct they just started to provision this hive. Uh, the queen of course is fed by them. If there are drones inside they can't get out. But the drones will be fed by the nurse bees and you might be thinking well if you're going to keep that on there for three days don't the drones have to eliminate? Don't they have to fly out and go to the bathroom? No, it's no different than if we had a weather event that kept them all inside. They can certainly hold their waste material on board until that time comes. So once again, though, this gives you a wider shot, a better view of the flight behavior. And as I described before, they're just staring at the hive. They're waiting. They're waiting for the queen to go. So I'm just going to let you watch this part, and I'll comment again when we start to see the pollen coming in. See what you spot.
So as we get up to the next sequence, you're going to see some distinctive differences. The bees that are on the landing board won't be just loitering around the way they are now. And you'll see a colony of bees that's in production mode. And I hope that all this is helpful and that seeing the behavior will embed itself and that you'll be able to spot this activity on a colony now. If I had not put the queen excluder on the front entrance of this hive, would they have departed? I am 99% sure that we would have lost these bees. The other question that comes around is what are their chances if they fly out on their own? Well, that depends on where you live and what kind of environment there is nearby and how many spaces there are for them to occupy. Their chances are very low. Uh, because habitat loss. Now, if somebody's got a swarm trap somewhere, they probably would happily go there. But in this case, uh, we're out of hives to hive them in, and I don't feel like giving them away. Also, it's a great chance to make this demonstration. So you're about to see the behavior transition right here. So listen to the difference in the sound. They've also changed to clean up mode. In, in other words, when they start cleaning things up, moving things out, they're taking responsibility for the space. You wouldn't clean a space that you were temporarily occupying. There's a drone right there stuck behind that um, queen excluder. But uh, listen to the air around and look at the bees. They're not just flying and hovering in front, there goes pollen. So we have pollen going in. The other thing I wanted to see is if they could get the pollen through the queen excluder without it falling off of their hind legs. And apparently they can. There's that drone again trying to get out. Another drone trying to get out. Drone caging is actually an option. There's a drone that's dead right there. We know it didn't starve to death, so the reason that drone died is anybody's guess. And now notice too, they're fanning. They're moving the air, but not the way they were before. Look at the landing board. Every bee on this landing board has a job right now. So they're productive, they're bringing in resources, and now we're at the point where we can actually remove the queen excluder from the front. Those drones will be happy because then they can get out and do what they're supposed to do. Here goes more pollen right underneath there. So you can feel good about it. Listen to their activity. They're very calm. This is a normal hive now. Now we've got it removed. Remember it was just held on with a bar clamp there. There's no reason to permanently attach it or to screw it on. Just clamping it to the front is enough. 
And look at all the productivity. They're going straight in and they're bringing resources in. This means that it's likely the queen is already laying. So they're not going anywhere. We'll do follow-ups on this hive. What are the chances of this flow hive two filling up enough that it would fill up this bottom box and then a medium super, which is what I do, and then a flow super on top this year? Highly unlikely. It's a swarm install. We're already in the third week of May. And uh, although they're going to do very well and probably get themselves well situated for winter time, this is not going to be a colony that we can take honey off of this year. But uh, I hope that you found it helpful to see what the bee behavior was and what the, the potentials were that they would leave. And this is just one of many methods that beekeepers can use to keep their bees from flying away after they've hived a swarm. Hive number 26, it's a brand new number on there. And uh, everything looks good here. Of course, we're gonna do follow-ups as the summer continues. And if you wanna know more about flow hives, for example, there'll be a link down in the video description. If you wanna know about the queen excluder entrance, then that will also be listed down in the video description. They're inexpensive. I've had them on my desk for years and not used them. And I thought when I saw the behavior here, great opportunity to share with you what that would be. And one of the things you might want to consider. So you don't have to find your queen and put her in a cage and then put that inside your hive. Just put a queen excluder on once you know they're occupied. And as we close out, I'm just showing the details of it. It looks like a normal metal queen excluder, commercial grade that somebody cut up and uh, put into this little frame here. That's it, very simple, at the same time really effective. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this video beneficial.